Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. I'm very happy to talk today about a topic I'm very passionate about. It's about two years ago that a small revolution started in aviation and that could change the way people are traveling in big cities. And we call it urban air mobility. So due to a set of new technologies, I think it will be possible in the next 10 years that we use a third dimension for traveling. So when we started to think about that kind of solution, so the first thing you have to do is you want to know which basic problem do you want to solve. And that has um, much to do with the so-called megacities. So due to the United Nations, uh, a megacity is defined as a city with more than 10 million inhabitants. And today, we have about 30 of them. So that more than 300 million pe people are potentially affected by traffic jams. Um, so just to give an example, in London, it takes you about 300 hours you lose per year in traffic jams. And that's, uh, that's huge. So that means you have less time for your family, your friends, and your recreation. So regarding to the future, more and more people move to the cities. They want to work there. They want to participate in the cultural life. That's called urbanization. And due to the ongoing urbanization, the number of the mega cities will even increase so that about 500 million people will be affected from traffic jams. And in the year 2030, about 5 billion people will live in urban areas, and that will be represent 60% of the world population. So we have additionally to add to this 500 million people, uh, billions of people who are potentially affected from traffic jams. So that means that these urban areas have really to improve the efficiency of their transport system. So having a look to this, so you want to be stuck in that. So what does that mean? Um, so for example, um, you all, all you know one-dimensional travel. So it's taking a train or an underground train. Um, regarding it's a two-dimensional travel, it's taking a car, a bus, or even a boat. So the system have a big disadvantage. So in the rush hour, the scalability is limited, um, as you see here. So you have a lot of bottlenecks. Um, furthermore, when you look at ground infrastructure, the costs for that are massive. Just to give an example, um, when you want to build a motorway, it's about 200 million euro. And when you want to build an underground train tunnel, it's even worse. It's 1 billion euro per kilometer. And in addition to the construction cost, you have to add some maintenance during the life cycle. So having a look at Sao Paulo, this case is very interesting because it's a very huge city. It's about 20 million citizens and more. And even now, there is a flying taxis available um, based on traditional helicopters. So this city has about 700 registered helicopters, and so it has more helicopters than New York and Tokyo together. Um, so um, we had a look at that, and we found out that there are hundreds of helicopter flights per day. So it's the only city with a dedicated helicopter traffic management um, in the world, so to manage all these flights. Um, regarding to the ground infrastructure, there are about 150 fully operational helipads available. So we ask ourselves, um, why does this not scale up to a mass market? So it's difficult to, ask, uh, to answer that, but uh, surely one thing is the economics. So it's um, very expensive to fly with a helicopter, and currently the flight hour is about $2,500. And in addition to that, when you want to have about 1,000 of air vehicles, over Sao Paulo, um, you would need um, a new generation of traffic management system for the air. And regarding the time, when you drive with your car in Sao Paulo from the airport to the city center, it takes you one and a half hour, one way, and compared with a helicopter flight, it's about 10 minutes 
but of course you have to add the boarding times and deboarding times, but even then it's much more, much faster. So knowing that flying taxi solutions even exist today, um, what is our vision? So it's to enable a new generation of transport solution by using the third dimension. So it's for everyone. So we want, we believe that it will become a mass market. Probably not in the first generation, but we think long time in aviation. And it has to be convenient and safe, so the passenger has to like this kind of solution. And it's a very important point, and now we are again at the economics, it has to be affordable. So that means that a, a flight trip from the airport to the city center should not cost more than taking a car taxi. So having a short look into the value chain of this urban air mobility solution. So first of all, you need to design, to develop, to certify, and to produce an urban aircraft. It needs to be really dedicated to fly in big cities. So that means it has to be a high grade of safety. It needs to be um, very low noise. And of course, it, has to be, it, need, it needs very low acquisition price. Regarding the support and service, you really need a um, maintenance concept which allows very low maintenance cost um, and also to, to guarantee a very high availability of your fleet. Regarding the flight operations, um, you have to ensure that it's safe and that it's seamless for the passenger. So the passenger really has to like it, to book again a flight. And regarding the air traffic management, this is a very central block um, to get the solution running. So that means when you have, for example, today, let's say 20 aircrafts over San Francisco at the same time, and now imagine you would have 5,000 air vehicles in the airspace, you need a very new kind of generation of air traffic management system to manage um, this kind of air traffic. So you need to switch from a centric one as today to a decentric one, for example, by using black blockchain technology. Um, yeah, so that means that kind of this traffic management logic is included in the vehicles and that the vehicles can avoid each other and communicate with each other. Regarding the ground infrastructure, it's not only about the number of having enough helipads in a big city, it's also about to ensure that the ground infrastructure communicates with the air vehicles. And it's also about the question, if you fly electric, we have to find a solution whether to replace the batteries or to recharge them. And this has consequence of the, on the design of the air vehicle and on the operational concept. And last but not least, the passenger solution. Um, you need to develop a smartphone app so that you can book your flight and communicate with the solution and also do billing. So um, in all these blocks, there are a lot of activities ongoing from different companies, from different organizations and authorities. Um, I picked one which is, for me, the most um, fascinating one. It's urban aircraft. And um, from, from all these many concepts, I picked one, and we call it the city airbus. So what is new on this kind of vehicle compared to a traditional helicopter? So traditional helicopters are designed for at least five and more missions, like emergency helicopter, police, corporate transport, oil and gas sector, utility. But this Airbus, City Airbus, is designed for one mission only, and that's passenger transport within big cities. So that means one mission means that you can reduce your development cost and reduce your occurring cost. Furthermore, um, it's a multi-copter architecture, so you have um, four main propulsion units, and each of them has two propellers counter-rotating, and that's basically to increase the safety. Furthermore, um, it's all electric, so locally emission-free, um, to help to improve um, the green footprint of the cities. Um, it has a very modular concept, so it allows very low production cost and also very low direct operating cost. And um, yeah, so currently there are a lot of very 
engaged and motivated engineers working on that. Um, started about uh, one year ago. And the first flight, the maiden flight, is planned end of this year. And we are very happy and looking forward to get uh, this milestone done. And uh, I would like to thank you for your attention. And uh, I'm happy to discuss uh, the question later on. Thanks. <laughs>